What's up everyone? Today I am pretty darn excited because I finally got my Keystone Pro hardware wallet and I'm going to unbox this thing and take you through step by step how to set this up. That way if you have your own Keystone Pro hardware wallet you'll know exactly what you need to do or if you're thinking about getting a Keystone Pro hardware wallet hopefully this video can help you decide if it's right for you. Let's get right into it. All right, so to set up the Keystone Pro hardware wallet, there are a couple things you're gonna need that don't actually come with the Keystone Pro, unfortunately. One thing is an SD card. Now the SD card is used to install firmware onto the Keystone Pro wallet. That's because the Keystone Pro is completely air-gapped, so it doesn't have Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, and there's no way to connect it to your desktop computer. Therefore, you have to have an SD card that you can put um, into your computer and for that you'll need like a, some kind of adapter like this one. That way you can insert this into your computer. You can pick one of these up on Amazon or at Walmart for like eight bucks. All right, so let's open this thing up. Some plastic wrap. And it doesn't look like it has any security tape on it. Um, sometimes they do. It does have this little tear away right here. So you're gonna wanna tear that off. And from there you should be able to open up the wallet. There's a security tape right there. Here you can see a better picture of the Keystone security tape. This is to help authenticate that you have an official Keystone device. So the Keystone Pro, it comes with um, two batteries. One requires four AAAs, and then it obviously has the rechargeable battery as well. So let's see what we have in the box here. You have a coupon code, yippee. And then you have the Keystone Pro. Looks like it's got a nice cover over it. And I believe the battery is already installed on this one, which it's just a magnet and it requires four triple A's. And then also in here, have a barcode and the extensive beginner's guide, as well as a recovery phrase sheet. So this is where you will write down your recovery phrase. Here is everything you need lined up. We have our battery case. We have the Keystone Pro hardware wallet. We have our secret recovery phrase sheet. We have our micro SD card. We have the adapter to use with the SD card. And then we have this little device that will plug into my computer. And now we are ready to go. We're ready to begin setting this up. If you want to use the rechargeable battery while setting up your device, it needs to be at least 70% charged. So that's something to keep in mind. If you don't have triple A's laying around for the uh, non-rechargeable battery, I just went around my house, found a couple remotes and uh, stole all the triple A's out of there. Don't tell my wife though. Hopefully I can get this done before she notices. Okay, so to begin the setup process, you're gonna wanna go to the Keystone Pro uh, or the Keystone website. Just type in Keystone Pro setup on Google and you will see their website pop up. So step one is web authentication. So it says we want to press and hold the power button for three seconds to boot up the Keystone. Let me take off this here and power button right here on the top. Just hold that for three seconds and this thing should turn on. Okay, once this thing powers on, we're going to select language. I'm just gonna keep it on English. Next, now it says, welcome to Keystone. Please open the following link to use on a PC. So we're gonna go ahead and click it's ready, start. Now it's telling us to scan the QR code. Okay, so you wanna go to this link right here on your computer. It's a keyst.1 forward slash start forward slash one. And this is where you're going to go to access the QR code. 
that you need to scan. And this opens up the camera so that we can then scan the QR code that's found on the website. Let's go ahead and scan this QR code. As you can see, I scanned it. Your device authentication code is this right here. And it looks like I need to enter this on the website. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. VBDF 5K 6A. And we'll go ahead and click verify. Authenticated, your device is secure. And then once it says your device is secure, you're gonna to wanna to hit success on the wallet. And now we need to set a password. All right, now we need to install the firmware onto our micro SD card. But before we can do that, we need to ensure that the micro SD card is in the FAT32 format. And this will, to get it to that format, this will depend on the type of desktop you're using. So whether you're using a Mac or a Windows device. So I'm using a Mac, so I'm gonna show you how to do it on a Mac. One thing I forgot to mention, as far as the SD card, just get one with 32 gigabytes, you don't need anything larger, definitely not anything smaller. 32 gigs is a perfect size. So once you plug your micro SD card in your computer, for a Mac, you're going to want to open up the disk utility, and then you're gonna to go to the external drive here. This is your micro SD card. And you're gonna to wanna to click on erase. You can rename it if you want. I'll name it FAT32. And then the format, click MS dash DOS fat and click erase. And then right there, it is automatically updating that to fat 32 and you are good to go. Just hit done. Now that your micro SD card is formatted for the fat 32 format, we get to download our firmware. There are two options for the Keystone Pro hardware wallet. You have multi coin firmware or Bitcoin only firmware. So if you only plan on storing Bitcoin on this wallet, obviously get the Bitcoin only firmware. If you are going to be storing other things like Ethereum and NFTs and different digital assets like that, you wanna download the multi-coin fir firmware. So I'm gonna go ahead, click on that, and it'll begin downloading. All right, now that we have that firmware downloaded, we just drag this update.zip file into our micro SD card and then there we go. Now we can take out our micro SD card, insert it into the Keystone Pro hardware wallet and start the update. So I'm going to take the micro SD card out of the adapter here, take that out. And then there should be an SD card slot right here on the device. Not sure which way this goes in like that and you wanna push it all the way in until, until it clicks in. There we go. And after we put that in there, we're going to need to re-enter our password. Okay, we should be good. So now I'm going to hit upgrade now. And it is saying a new version is available for update and now we have to compare the SHA-256 to the one that is on the website. All right, so we'll head back over to the computer here, and then we can click right here, double check the SHA-256 sum. And there are a couple, couple ways to do this. I'm just going to uh, verify by looking at the number on the device and the one on the official website. So. Just go to the official website, and then we're gonna come down here to the multi-coin firmware and check the SHA-256. So this right here is what you wanna match up on your wallet. You wanna make sure that every single digit matches. So if it looks good, go ahead and click um, update now. And then of course you will have to enter your password again. After entering my password, you can see that it is updating. Okay, looks like it finished updating. It took about three minutes and now you're gonna have to enter your password again. After you enter your password, you have two options. You can create a new wallet. 
So if this is your first time creating a hardware wallet or if you just want a new secret recovery phrase, you're gonna wanna hit create wallet. This will create your new account basically. Or if you have an existing hardware wallet that you wanna import into your Keystone Pro hardware wallet, you hit import and you'll be asked to enter your secret recovery phrase. For this one, I am going to click the import, or sorry, not import, but the create wallet. You have two types of recovery phrases you can set up that you can choose from. Not all hardware wallets have this option. So the first is you can create a single backup phrase or you can create, um, create wallet with Shamir backup. When creating a new wallet with Shamir backup, um, it generates a, the, a user set amount of recovery shares, each a sequence of 20 words instead of a single recovery seed. So with a single recovery seed, you're gonna get 24, 24 words. And then the user sets a threshold, the number of recovery shares required to recover the wallet. So basically you're just, um, you have to input more recovery seeds to access your wallet. So it is a bit more secure versus a single phrase. For this wallet, I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, the new wallet using a single backup. So go ahead and click single backup. When you click this button, it's going to reveal your 24, 24 word secret recovery phrase. That said, what you wanna do now is you're gonna take that recovery phrase and make sure to write it down on your recovery sheet. It's important that you write down each word so it'll line up, you know, word number one, you wanna write it in spot number one, word number two, number two, number three because it does matter which order you write the words in. So make sure to write that down correctly. Once you've written down your wallet's recovery phrase, it says, please, en please enter your 24 word recovery phrase in the table below. So this is to ensure that you wrote it down correctly. That way you can easily access your wallet. Something you'll notice when you're entering in your recovery phrase is that it will auto populate the word for you. It'll finish the word for you. This is normal, so don't be startled if this is happening when you enter the words into your wallet. After you enter in your recovery phrase and assuming you entered it correctly, it's going to create your wallet and it will initiate the secure chip element. So you just gotta hang tight until it finishes doing its thing. All right, once it's all set up, you can connect a software wallet or you can just connect the Keystone Companion app on your mobile phone. Just go to the app store and download the Keystone hardware wallet app. Um, but you can also connect it to a software wallet like MetaMask if you wanna do that. So I think just for ease of use right now, and you can always change this later in the settings, you can switch between um, you know, MetaMask or the Keystone app. So you can always go back, but I'm gonna click this right here. And then you can choose which blockchain you want enabled. So looks like it has default Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Binance Smart Chain. That works for me. So I'm gonna click that. And then you have a QR code here. This is what you're gonna scan with your mobile phone using the Keystone Harbor Wallet app to connect your wallet to the app. And what this will do is allow you to manage your funds using the app since this wallet is air gapped. You can't connect it to your computer. So really the only way to do that is through the phone. So the Keystone Pro does come with some pretty sweet security features. It does have a fingerprint scanner here on the back. And to set that up is really simple. You just go to the settings here, hamburger icon, go to your settings, and then click fingerprint settings. And then of course you'll have to enter your password, but after you set up the fingerprint scanner, you won't have to enter your password anymore if you don't want to. So once you enter your password, you'll see you have a few different options. So if you enable these, this is what you will allow the device to do with just your fingerprint scan. So you can unlock the device, enable that. If you want to use your fingerprint as your passphrase, enable that right there. And if you want to sign transactions with just your fingerprint, you would enable that right there. Super simple. And that is how you set up the Keystone Pro hardware wallet. Now some important FAQs that I know a lot of people are wondering about. First are software updates. As far as Keystone updates, they do release updates. Um, you know, pretty consistently. So you'll wanna make sure to stay on top of those. I like to check for updates every three months at the very least. If you can do it more often, that's even better. Another thing is about the micro SD card. You don't need to keep it in the device. After you install the firmware, you can take it out of the, 
device and store it somewhere safe until you're ready to update again. I also saw some questions about whether or not you could import your Ledger or Trezor wallet or other hardware wallets into the Keystone Pro. And you can, for the most part, uh, Ledger, definitely Trezor, as long as it has the same BIP39 word list, uh, which is what's you, the words used to create your secret recovery phrase, you'll be able to import that into your Keystone Pro hardware wallet. Something else that I wanted to mention is, you know, there are the, the paper recovery sheets, but a better option is a metal seed phrase storage plate. This is stainless steel, and this one specifically comes with these pre-cut letters that you just peel off, and then you just insert it um, into, the, into this here. I don't wanna open it up because I have my key phrase in here, but this thing is fireproof, it's waterproof, and it is, I mean, that thing is solid. You could knock someone out with this thing. And this is from Keystone as well. So I will make sure to leave a link to that in the description along with the wallet if you wanna check it out. So if you have any questions about the Keystone Pro, whether that's setup or just technical questions or anything else about hardware wallets or Web3 in general, make sure to drop a comment and I will be sure to reply. As always, thank you for watching.